Hello, welcome back to Entrepreneurial Finance. Today we're going to go over Chapter 2, which talks about the different forms of business organization. For a lot of you, you may have seen this topic before, but we are going to go into depth and actually asking you to apply um, this concepts in specific situations. In addition to that, we are also going to look at the different forms from the perspective of an entrepreneur um, and a founder. Lastly, we're going to look at some new forms of business organization as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are the learning objectives for this chapter. So once again, I want to remind you that these videos are intended to highlight the concepts from the textbook. It is not a replacement of the textbook. So first, let's take a look at the different forms of business organization. And some of the factors that we want to consider when we are choosing amongst them. One is the cost and the other is the reporting requirements. Notice that this the textbook describes um, this in more details and also highlight the importance of the differences between different states. So uh, in addition to choosing the cost and reporting requirement, you may also want to take into account where, which state do you want to, to form your business. One factor that most businesses owners tend to focus on uh, taxes. So there are important tax consequences in terms of where you incorporate, where you form your business and also the specific form of business that you use. Something that a lot of um, entrepreneurs didn't think about it in the beginning and that is the, um, the form of business organization you choose could have impact on the future of the business. And the future of the business may be uh, succession planning if you uh, you know, many years from now, the owner decided to retire it. Or as the business grow, you may want to sell it to um, a VC firm or maybe even take your company public. And those who have um, your original forms of business organization will have an impact on that. And it's not too early to keep those things in mind as you decide on your business structure. So here are the general forms of business organization. First, there is the sole proprietorship. Uh, partnership, corporation. These are the three most common form of business organization that uh, student, business students typically have seen in your other classes. However, in this class, we're going to focus more from the entrepreneur standpoint. So even within corporation, there are two types of corporation. One is C-Corp, which is just your regular corporation. And this is the type of corporations that is typically will be taken public. And uh, this is what we uh, in a business school. These are the uh, basic assumption that we the business we're analyzing is a C corp. In this class, we actually would not be looking at C corp because most entrepreneurs do not start their business as C corp. Most business start their uh, most entrepreneurs start their business either as a sole proprietorship or an S corp. Um, nowadays, the most popular form of business is a limited liability company. We're going to also talk, take a look at a new form of business organization called a benefits corporation. So now we're going to take a look at the um, each one of these forms in more details. So sole proprietorship is the most simple and the most common form of business organization. There is no distinction between the entrepreneur and the business. So you can, you know, anybody who sells anything is a sole proprietor. So if I sell the scarf that I need, I just become a sole proprietor. There's no form required. There is no reporting requirement. I do have to report my income to the IRS. However, it's limited to a single owner. Uh, there is an exception to that. If your spouse is in business with you and you and your spouse file um, joint income tax, then you and your spouse can be considered a single owner uh, in the eyes of the IRS. Because there's no distinction between the owner and the business, all the business income is taxed as personal income. And also because there's no distinction between the owner and the business, um, all the liability of the business is also the liability of the individual. 
we're going to talk a little bit more about personal liability because this is an important con uh, important topic for entrepreneur. In terms of the number of businesses, the largest number of businesses are from a sole proprietorship. However, in terms of size, sole proprietorship uh, does not generate nearly the amount of revenue that a corporation generates. The next form of business organization is partnership. Partnership is not very common. Uh, in fact, partnerships are um, usually used by specific um, professions, particularly professionals such as en engineers, accountants, uh, doctors, lawyers, um, and there are reasons for that. Uh, we'll cover the general basics. So for partnerships, there are two types of partnerships. One is general partnership and the other is limited partnership. The term limited here refers to limited liability. So if a partner is not active in the day-to-day -day operation of the business, they can be in limited partners. And those are very, very popular in real estate investments. Uh, a general partner is responsible for the liability of the partnership and is active in the day-to-day -day operation of the partnership. So in a lot of the real estate um, arrangement, the limited partners are the investors and the general partner can actually be a corporation. So that is a very common, or an LLC, that's a very common arrangement for real estate investments. Something that's very important in a partnership is the partnership agreement. There's a similar uh, um, document for each form of business organization once we grow beyond the sole proprietorship. So in the textbook, there is a detailed list of things that you want to take into account uh, when you develop a, a partnership agreement. One thing that you want to take into account is that you want to incre include as many scenarios as possible. It's particularly important to include the less favorable scenarios. Um, when things are good, all the partners are happy. But the partnership agreement is most important when things are not going well, when things are not going as expected. That's when you need to got the that's when you need the agreement to guide you through those rough times. So one of your assignments will be developing um, an agreement with your teammates. So in the agreement, what, do you, what should you have? You should have the rights, responsibility. So rights is include voting rights. So if, if a decision has to be made, who get to make the decisions? If there is disagreement, how would those disagreements be resolved? Responsibilities, who is responsible for doing what? Be as specific as possible, uh, along with obligation. So responsibility and obligation. So in a partnership, obligation sometimes includes if the company needs more money, who's gonna, who's gonna contribute money? Who's gonna contribute time? And then finally, benefits. How would the benefits be distributed? So in partnership, that will be how who can take out money when. Um, so in your team agreement, you should also have the rights, responsibilities, or, or obligations, and benefits listed out. Um, and for example, if all of you are working on the paper, should everyone share the grade equally? Um, those are, again, what happens if someone is supposed to do something and that person failed to do it? Again, we want, we want to include the best scenario as well as the good scenario. And the agreement is particularly important when the best scenarios happen. Um, for partnership, the, ink, the tax consequences is similar to a sole proprietorship. All the business income is taxed as personal income. And all the liability of the partnership is also the personal liability unless you are a limited partner. So that's the only exception. Next, we're going to take a look at corporations. Corporation is considered a distinct separate legal entity, and that's very important. So there is, there, there is a clear separation between the owner and the business. And because of that, 
the owner is protected from personal limit uh, personal liability. So what that means is the liability of the business is not the liability of the owner. And there is an important thing to keep in mind. If you are a small business owner, the chances are that if you borrow money from the bank, the bank will require you to personally guarantee the loan. In that case, you are still personally li liable for the amount that the business borrow. However, you are protected from other liabilities of the business. So, for example, if there is litigation against the business, then your personal property is not subject to litigation that is filed against the company. Similar to partnership agreement, um, there is an article of incorporation and there are corporate bylaws. So, again, read the details in the textbook. So the Articles of Incorporation um, talk about the structure of the business and the corporate bylaws talk about how the business will be governed. So similar to partnerships, think about all the possible future scenarios. And in this case, particularly when you're going to uh, raise funds and bring in new investors. Because the laws that governs corporations differ quite quickly from state to state, choosing a state that has um, friendly state law to corporations is an important consideration. And then lastly, you need to decide whether or not you want to be a C corp versus an S corp. There are a lot of details in there, and um, I will not be listing them here in the video, but instead I'm going to refer you to the textbook. So you, so it's not always the case that you want to choose an S corp. There are situations where a C corp could actually be a a, um, a better form of business organization. Uh, one distinction between the C corp and the S corp is the tax um, treatment. In an S corp, your the income from the corporation is taxed as personal income. In a C corp, the income to the corporation is taxed first as business income. And then if dividends are paid out from the C corp to the owners, those dividends will get taxed again as personal income. So that's where the double taxation comes from. However, if you don't pay dividend, then you may not uh, be subject to double taxation. So um, those are some of the stra tax strategy that you may want to consult a tax lawyer before you decide on the form of business uh, um, um, organization. The form, of, the form of business organization that is most popular nowadays for, um, for entrepreneurs are uh, limited liability companies or LLCs. And that's because they have the benefit of uh, being taxed as individual income. Uh, however, there are IRS restrictions because in addition to being taxed as individual income, it potentially can also have limited liability. So here are um, some of the things that you could choose to have. So you, you can choose to be to have the tax to income tax as individual income. And then you can have at most two of the following. Continuit continuity of life, centralization of management, or limited liability. So what does that mean? So think through the, the consequences. So let's say you chose to have an LLC and you definitely want to benefit from the tax um, treatment. And you also want limited liability. So you have taken one. Now you have only another um, option. So let's say it's a relatively small company. That means you are centralizing management. And what that means is if the owner, if the owners die, then the LLC has to be discontinued. So unlike corporation where the shares can be transferred from one owner to the next without um, uh, and the company can continue, an LLC, if you chose centralization of management and limited liability, then if one of the owners in the LLC die, then the LLC has to be dissolved and a new LLC can be formed. So you see that a lot, um, particularly in construction business, um, each, each new building is separately 
a, a separate LLC. So uh, because of the lack of continuation of life, a lot of times transfer of ownership will mean dissolving the LLC and establishing a new LLC. So that's very common. Uh, the other thing that you are limited is the free transfer transferability of ownership. So again, that is um, ties into the continu continuity of life. So you can only choose two out of these four, and most people choose um, tax as individual income tax and limited liability. And again, because a lot of times the LLCs are relatively small in terms of number of owners, they will have centralization of management. So those are two almost uh, the default choices. And the result is that um, any changes in ownership will result in the dissolution of the LLC and an establishment of a new one. Similar to partnership agreement and corporate bylaws, um, the LLC agreement is very important. So you want to make sure that you include as many as many scenarios as possible, and also um, make sure that you include what to do when things don't go as expected. Here is a summary of the difference. This is table 2.2 from the textbook comparing the difference between LLC and SCOB. So um, one of the, so for example, um, whether or not you are allowed to have um, the, max, the maximum number of owners. So LLC, there are no limit on that, but S Corp, there is. So as you, so if you are thinking about um, selling shares or bringing in new investors, uh, LLC will have fewer limits than an S Corp. Um, and the other limit is non-human legal entity as owner. So there are no limits to LLC, but there's limit to SCOP. So what that means is you can have an LLC as an owner of another LLC. Um, so you know that you'll notice that the LLC in general has a lot more um, uh, favorable treatment than SCOP. So it is no surprise that um, SCOP has become less and less popular and LLC is um, more and more popular, particularly for startup and new businesses. The last form of business um, organization that I want to talk about is um, called a benefit corporation. A benefit corporation is not available in all the states yet. So what makes a benefit corporation special? Um, sometimes these are called dual purpose or multi-purpose corporation. So in addition to financial focus, benefit corporation oftentimes has a secondary mission. And the secondary mission may be social, environmental, or humanitarian um, part. And by declaring yourself as a benefit corporation, the business is making a commitment to the non-financial aspect of the business because they are voluntarily uh, submitting to additional reporting requirements. Now, because benefit corporation is not available in all the states, um, companies are looking for alternatives. Uh, one of the alternative is to be certified as a B Corp. A B Corp is not a benefit corporation. So this can be a little bit confusing. So a B Corp is a certification provided by the B Lab, and it is technically not a legal form of business organization. And any business, no matter what their form of organization is, so it can be a C Corp, it can be a sole proprietorship, it can be an LLC, they can get the certification from the B Lab to become a B Corporation. And to maintain their certification, they do have to provide reporting requirement on their uh, social environmental impact. This concludes the discussion of forms of business organization, and you have a chance to apply this concept uh, in the case and also in developing your team agreement. Good luck, and I'll see you back here again soon.